environment definitely has changed uh, in the construction community in Calgary over the last uh, uh, six or seven months since, of course, the new provincial government has been elected. And uh, there is concern uh, in the environment that we currently exist with the uh, climate change initiatives, uh, carbon captures. Uh, what's happening uh, with the oil and gas sector has a major impact uh, on the city of Calgary. And a uh, few people know it, but uh, the city of Calgary uh, has the uh, largest inventory of office space available in Canada, uh, ranked eighth in North America. And uh, so there is concern relative to uh, building the current number of towers that are being built in the downtown core and the vacancy rate expanding uh, to uh, 17, 18 percent over the coming uh, year or so. So, uh, however, the contractors are very optimistic. Uh, as I said, the environment is changing and they are uh, forming alliances with uh, European firms and are going after more work more on a global scale than uh, ever before uh, as uh, the uh, major general contractors have become uh, uh, massive organizations that need a lot of work to uh, keep their, uh, their businesses afloat. The industrial sector, of course, uh, mainly in Fort Mac, uh, Calgary, uh, you could say uh, more or less a white collar. You know, the heavy uh, uh, head offices uh, uh, located within the city of Calgary. And uh, so that uh, is there. However, in the residential sector, uh, we see a downturn uh, at the current time. But uh, there is confidence over the long term that oil and gas will rebound. The question amongst the economists, the economists is whether or not uh, uh, as to when it'll happen, whether it's uh, 12 months, 24 months, uh, three years, four years down the road. But uh, I think there's a confidence there that it will come around. And the major oil and gas players, uh, the Suncors, Huskies, uh, CNRL, they're all uh, there for the long term. Uh, it's a matter of how do we get our product uh, offshore. So we're eager to look at uh, the Energy East pipeline and uh, other ways and means, uh, whether it's rail or, or otherwise, to get the uh, product uh, to uh, those nations that needed in the world. We have lots of work right now and our people are generally quite busy and some of the roar of the engine of our economy that was happening up till the summer um, had great implications. So the city of Edmonton has uh, eight billion dollars of work going on right now quite near to City Hall and uh, there are towers of immense size and an arena that's phenomenal and uh, all of these things happening at the same time is an amazing growth for Edmonton so uh, there's just a, an excitement and an energy and that of course creates fuller employment as particularly in construction and then there are other people who from the roar of the economic engine were planning to build buildings and but the, uh, the increase in population causes infrastructure needs and public purchasing that's necessary because we have children and families uh, 30,000 a year have been moving into Edmonton and our population is growing at that rate and with that we need new schools, we need streets, we need neighborhoods, we need places for people to live and all that creates uh, a lot of activity as well. And then the government's uh, response recently to say that they would like to borrow and have a deficit financing of infrastructure uh, for the sake of strengthening the economy at the same time buying infrastructure when it is priced perhaps a little bit more uh, affordably than it might be in a, uh, in a roaring economy. So as things are and will slow down, the cost of construction may go down. Uh, that's what, uh, what we're seeing. But the government commitment to, I believe it's uh, $34.6 billion over the next five years, is a, is a real aggressive move that will help us uh, just build a, an incredible community. <laughs>